Hey, welcome back everyone, Toys is here, and I'm back again with yet another Batman 66 video, and today it comes courtesy of my friends over at McFarlane Toys. This is an early look at their next upcoming wave of characters featuring Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. The first one being Robin, which yes, we've seen many a Robin in this toy line. This time around, he has a newly sculpted head portrait, which features him wearing the gas mask slash rebreather, along with two accessories we've priorly seen with radioactive cowled Batman. On the back side, you get a nice render of the figure, couple photos, Robin with oxygen mask, you get the idea. Here's the barcode. Look for all three of these figures to start hitting store shelves in and around this coming June. Same thing with Batman. Robin's got the rebreather mask. Batman's got the rebreather mask, but Batman comes with a really cool bat zooka. So I'm very stoked on that. Also, the hands are different. More on that in just a few. Here on the back side, you get a nice look at the figure, Batcave, all that jazz. Here's the barcode. Expect these to hit Target store shelves and possibly even other retailers online. Now, the third and pretty much the only new, new figure that we're getting in this wave is Batgirl. And a lot of people are going to say, wait a minute, uh, where's the glitter? Where's the, the whole Yvonne Craig likeness and whatnot? This one is based off the comic book of Batman. 66. So it's not exactly going to be Yvonne Craig, but you get the idea. So it's a little bit more in tune with the two face of this line. The backside, you get a render, you get the comic book art. The render sure is something, right? Look at those teeth right there. <laughs> I'm glad the figure doesn't look exactly like that. Here's the barcode for Batgirl as well when she starts to hit store shelves. So, this is going to be an absolute retro blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is an early look at the brand new Batman 66, the television show, and the comic book, The Gas Mask Batman, Gas Mask Robin, and Batgirl by McFarlane Toys. And while I got all you old chums here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my Batman 66 videos. Now, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. I really love this line. So there's a lot of videos on this for those that are interested. Now, here's everything out of the packaging. You got three figures. And what I'm really stoked about is that each figure comes with an accessory that makes sense, right? Really adds to the whole lineup. Robin comes with a Batarang. Now, we have seen this before, like I said. You could put a little string right there if you wanted to go ahead and do that. We also get the Bat Radio again. It's the same release as last time. I feel like it's still missing some paint key aspects. It also has some chippage on the back. At least it's on the back, though, right? And again, like I said in the TV show, most specifically, the first episode, you could say, and then subsequently other episodes as the show went on, you get the gas mask slash rebreather. And I like that they did that. At least if you're going to re-release a Batman and a Robin, make it different. And different they have. It's definitely a nice look. It changes the figure up. It says oxygen, crystal clear, a little bit of silver. It's nicely painted, and it fits what you see on the show, as in it fits over Robin's nose, but it goes under Batman's cowl when we look at him. So... Otherwise, the figure is going to be the exact same. Don't believe me? Well, here's a bit of a comparison to show you. So you have the original look for Robin, which, hey, that totally looks great. And then you have this new version with the rebreather gas mask. And then you have the Japanese tin box set, which darkens the colors a little bit and whites out the eyes. But you get the idea. There's very subtle changes throughout, if anything, same cape as well, which is unfortunate. That's one thing that I really wish they would change. You gotta change the capes somehow. Now, in terms of Batman, he comes with his bat Zuka, or if you want to call it the bat charge launcher. Each one works. It's really well done. I'm happy that they included this. It's got nice paint. For the most part, there's a couple little blotches here and there, like the red part right there on top. But for the most part, yeah, it is painted quite nicely. It's got a nice design. And yeah, it's straight from, let's say, Batman 66, the movie, when they have to fire on the submarine and then Robin just blows up the submarine, basically, right? It's just whatever. <laughs> It's very cool. It's a nice accessory. You might even be able to put a little effect piece in the tip right there. Very nice. But overall, I'm happy that they included this. It's different from the pow, bang, whiz, bams. Batman himself, he's got the rebreather gas mask. Again, 
That really is the only difference if you look at the costume, but he has two open hands this time. Finally, that was another grievance that I've had with recent Batman 66 videos, so I'm glad they changed that. The rebreather looks great. Oxygen, silver, yellow, painted nicely, goes underneath the nose of his mask, doesn't cover it, just like on the show. So, very happy overall. Those are two repaints between Batman and Robin that you can look at it and go, I don't really need this, or I'm a huge fan, and I collect them all. So they make it easy, right? And here is a bunch of different Batmans, which, again, not a whole lot of difference other than this new one having a couple open hands and then a different head portrait. So from the original Batman with the closed fist to now this rebreather gas mask to the radioactive cowl, and then the tin box Japanese version, which I absolutely love. I love the darker colors and the whited out eyes, but you get the idea. It's largely the same figure through and through with some subtle differences, which again, totally makes it easy to pass if you don't want them. The capes, the exact same. You get the idea. These are two figures that make it go, yeah, you know, whatevs. However, Batgirl, she's my favorite of the wave. She comes with her own little Batgirl batarang, which is totally cool, and she holds it nicely. She has one open hand and one fisted hand. The costume looks great for the most part. It's got all the different colors and whatnot from the comic book. But again, I'm glad they're giving more batarang type weapons gadgets much like the bat cuffs right here i don't mind that it's not a real chain it looks very old school very kenner very much that it came from the 60s which i'm totally happy with the one thing that i would have preferred is that you could actually put the cuffs on the bad guy for instance she's caught the joker so now she can cuff him whether it goes in the front or in the back that would have been totally awesome to see but it does still make for a nice display if you wanted to do it that way. But it takes away from the fun. If they were simply just split a little bit, I would have totally taken that as well. It doesn't have to be fully functioning, open and close, all that jazz. Just have it split a little bit so you can slip it on the bad guy. The actual figure for Batgirl is pretty well done. I have one grievance, and it's one that a lot of us have been talking about with McFarlane Toys for quite some time. We'll get to that in just a second. But overall... I'm very stoked to have a Batgirl. Would I have preferred the show costume with Yvonne Craig and all that kind of stuff? Well, heck yeah, but that really isn't in the cards, apparently. Now, in terms of the yellow taffeta cape, it is what it is. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. We definitely need a change on the capes. They've changed a lot of things in the Batman 66 line so far. The capes would be a welcome improvement. From the head portrait to the likeness to looking at the comic book... Yeah, it's exactly what you see in the comic book. Nice mask, nice purple overall. Now, right here, when the gloves meet the arms and the elbows, this is where I have my grievance. And this is where I keep wanting to say, McFarlane, would you guys sit down and just double check your work? You have the gloves, which are a darker type purple. Then it goes to right there, right above the elbow. The color still continues. And then right where the joint, where there's two different pieces, it hits her forearm, and then it's the new color, which doesn't work. So it's kind of like, eh, it's cheapy. You really have to work on that. The paint from the canopy of the recent, the Flash Batmobile, you know what I mean? It's things like this that drive us collectors nuts. Because you're like, yeah, come on, you were so close. You really got to work on that. That's something that I'm like, come on, you're better than that. Come on, let's see it. The hair is perfect. It got a nice little wash to it. It doesn't really disrupt the articulation on the head. It'll kind of knock into the taffeta cape. And then you got the arms, the elbows, the wrists, which again, it's nothing too mind-blowing for the Batman 66 line. Everything works. Everything looks good. I'm glad they gave her one fisted hand so you could punch the Joker in the face. But other than that, from the waist to the legs to the knees, which spin, nothing at the feet, the boots. The boots look nice, though. It gives a little bit of a height, which is nice to see. But everything looks great, and I especially love the belts. Just everything is so old school about this, and it brings a smile to my face. But what doesn't bring a smile to my face is the mismatched paint right there. You gotta work on that, McFarlane. Come on now. Now, when it comes to her scalature, she might be a little bit on the tall side, but with her heels, it really doesn't bother me all too much. Plus, she's shorter than Batman. She's a little bit taller than Robin. At least she's shorter than Two-Face. And here's a little bit of a Shadow of the Bat callback, right? Very cool to see. And when it comes to all the vehicles, I'm happy to say that she is perfectly form-fitted to ride in each of them. So she could be a passenger. She could be a driver. You could do whatever you like. And that's part of the fun of this Batman 66 line. If it didn't happen in the show, you can definitely create it for yourself 
right on your toy shelf. So that is going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new wave of McFarlane Toys' Batman 66 figures. And again, thank you to McFarlane for sending these out early for the purposes of this video. These are a lot of fun. Again, the Batman and the Robin, a lot of people will probably look at those and go, yeah, I definitely don't need those. They've done a lot of repaints of them, but I'm happy to say that at least there's something different and the accessories definitely improve upon a very basic figure. I will say though, I am glad that they changed the hands on this newest Batman, although some swap out parts would be a nice addition to this Batman 66 line, not gonna lie. But in the case, you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Batman 66. I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, I've been hearing you guys on all your suggestions for Batman 66. Keep them coming down in the description below. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.